Folks, we're back. Look, it's raining a little bit. I was getting ready to say we need more rain. Though. Yeah, it's raining a little bit. <laughs> we're, but six you know what? we're six inches ahead. By it's now. November. Yeah. We're, I know, is it? It's or is October. that tomorrow? That's no, day after tomorrow. Day no. after tomorrow is November. Yeah. Monday is November. Monday's November. We're right there. Monday, I've got Grandparents' Day at my grandkids' uh, private school. We talked about the wrestling right. and everything in Atlanta. And the election's on Tuesday. So... Uh, you know, I'll we won't take there. too much time, but you've been out politicking. I think of my grandson last weekend to straighten up signs that people have pulled yeah. over and everything. And uh, we didn't go knock on any doors or anything. But I got a great picture of him, 14-year-old boy out there stomping signs into the dirt. It was, it's been fun. All right, Dr. William Whaley, we want to thank Georgia Cancer uh, specialist affiliated with Northside Cancer Center for our segment every week. Now, we've got one question that we have broke up into two parts. Dr. Whaley's going to address it to, in two parts. So we only have one question in two parts, A and B, yeah, that you're and, going and, to address. And, and the really, the really the focus on this, it's sort of a tragedy here. And it's a Ray Tidman. He, he's out looking at the trees, okay? He's looking he's, at leaves. He's up in the mountains looking yeah. at, where is he, Snowbird Lodge up in North Carolina. Not far. He could have driven down here. It wouldn't take him over an hour. To yeah, exactly. But he could have been here. But he, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, he's probably sitting on a porch there with a cup of coffee and a do, you know donut or not, something. Not bad. No, no, it wouldn't be a donut. He could be of a piece of fruit or a piece of celery or something. But, it, you know, he should have had a donut and coffee. And, and this is going to be devoted to him here. And, and what about the tie? I was getting ready it to doesn't that. mean anything. The jacket does. Veterans Day is the eleventh, and uh, and you hear of all, you've heard all this BS coming out. I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm not going to even talk. Well, about now it. I'm going to say this. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. I'm going to say this. I know the jacket, and I I will tell you this, folks. I've, I've known this guy a long time. It's not that he doesn't wear the jacket often, but when he puts the jacket on, this this, this jacket is special. Yeah, this jacket, That's right. This jacket goes to 1968. Exactly. And I told you, you can tell you can tell that these are legit when you hold it up to the light. You can see that USN right gravitating in there. Anyway, now uh, something this about is my the flight tie. jacket. Nothing, nothing about the tie. The, but no. I like it because. That purple is splending right yeah, over into the these, shirt. Yeah, well, that, that's my I wife. Just to say my that. wife picks out the Yeah, colors. Jane, way to go. All right. Yeah, all right. This is a tragedy here. You ready? Yes. I am confused. This is how this question begins. My mother has locally advanced cervix cancer that is causing her to have an obstructed kidney and she has one lymph node. So he tells you right off the bat, she has got cancer of the cervix that has spread up the bladder and obstructed the kidney. That means that kidney's going to die if you don't do something about it. And one lymph node. So there's no surgical option here, and this is very advanced. And he goes on to tell how she's going to be treated. And we're going to go into this in a minute, which sounds like she's getting good care. She's going to be treated by radiation and some chemo. So they're going to try and shrink this thing down and open up that kidney. There is no surgical option here. But here he gets to the meat, which is the second part of this question. And you will remember how many times Ray and I have sat here and said, get your colonoscopy, get your mammogram. Remember, we talked about pap smears right. the other day. We haven't gotten to the crucial, crucial part of this question yet. She stopped having pap smears at 65, and she's 82 now. So this is 17 years after she stopped having pap smears. Now listen to the next part. She was told, quote, you don't need a pap smear, end quote, when she turned 65. We're going to come to that in a minute. That's because insurance companies didn't want to pay for pap smears as women got older because they didn't think they were going to live very long. We haven't talked about cervix cancer much because it, its incidence went way down. We're going to come to that again in a minute. 
came way down once they started doing pap smears. And you remember that shot that they give kids now going to school for HPV? Yeah. We've argued about the morality of it. Why do you give a kid a shot that's 12 years old that's supposed to stop a, a sexually transmitted disease? Well, anyway, this is where this stuff comes from. And a 65-year-old woman wouldn't have been around when HPV was around in any event. So she's, she also has not had a colonoscopy. You still with me? Yes. Her parents all lived into their 90s. Now, that's, that's important, right? And her oldest sister is 93. So this woman is, comes from a long line of people. She's in excellent health, and they stopped doing preventative tests on her at 65. Now, that means her sister here has lived already another 30 years beyond age 65. Well, I will say this. Throughout the years, one thing, one of the many things I've learned on the program is the detail you need as far as male, female, age, family history. This is why family history is important. Right. You're able to really break this question down because you know how how old the parents are. Yeah, you got a sister. Right. So right. so All right. well and the other thing about this is the other thing about this is that people are different, you know. I mean, if, if 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 everybody dies at 62 in the family, and your oldest, you know, your brother had a heart attack at 48, you're a different biological animal than than this woman. So let me go on through with this thing here. So she's not had a colonoscopy, right? See, that would have been 30 years ago. Well, well what, 17 years ago, and you know, she hasn't had a colonoscopy, I guess, since she turned 65. I know cancer death rates are falling, and we're going to go into that again in a minute. And more people are being diagnosed with cancer, with screening, as you have stated many times on your program. So what he's saying here is the death rate from cancer is going down, the number of cancer patients is going up. So what does that mean? You're curing more of them, right? All right. Is it proper to deny my mother a test that might have detected the cancer sooner? So he's asking for a value judgment here. Well, let me say this. When, when we say we have more cases of cancer, because there's, there's – I'm going to put you on the spot. How many different cancers are they? <laughs> Well, how many different organs are there? Right. Yeah, you got the lungs. Got, gonna be a, in the lung, right. you got seven kinds of cancer. So that alone, that alone. But when we hear there's a, a, a lot more cases, our testing and screening is better. Wait a minute. He's got the message. Five years was taken. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's what we're getting ready to say. Right. That's what he says. Okay. We're, di we're diagnosing it earlier. That's first. So we so we get more that way. Second, people are living longer. Right. So right. I mean, they live longer. You got more population. Exactly. And it hurts you more when you get along. Okay. Put up that first one there. So we're going to just talk about this particular patient first. So the title of the question was the chemo radiation therapy for advanced cervical cancer. There is no surgical option here because to operate on this 82 year old woman, you'd have to take out her uterus. You'd have to take out her bladder. You'd have to create an artificial like bag for colostomy for her urine. You'd have to take out most of the pelvic lymph nodes. It would be a huge, gigantic procedure, and it would not extend her life one second longer than treating her with chemotherapy and radiation. It would change her quality of life. Because it would ruin her quality right, it would of ruin life. ruin her quality of All life. All right, so pull that one down. This is, this is the screening guidelines for pap smears. And if you just read age 65 and older, no screening. So there is the official guideline that was applied to this patient that may make some sense for the general population of people who don't live this long, whose families don't live as long as her family lives, 
You can pull that down now. But the issue here is her family lives a long time. She's in good health, and she's going to be around 30 more years. Now, we've gotten to this discussion before with colon cancer and my wife's mother. My mother is one of 11 brothers and sisters. Six of them had colon cancer. Her mother's still alive at 93. Right. And she got the colon cancer in her late 80s. So you can't quit screening people just because of age. It's discrimination. Maybe they could get them for age discrimination. Okay, put this next one up because you need to see this a little bit. Cervix cancer blocking off a kidney. That sounds sort of strange. So this is, this is again, your anatomy lesson. But you see how the uterus sits there and then the cervix sits right there and right on top of it's the bladder. Yes. Just imagine the prostate. Remember we talked about how the prostate can obstruct the bladder. So, that you, so if you had a cervix cancer right there and it went to right there, that's where the kidney drains into the bladder. So that's what's happened. You can pull that down now. But what happens is if you block that kidney, whether you block it with a kidney stone that you could remove or you block it with a tumor, if you block it and it stays blocked, it's going to die. So you've got to unblock it. So what they're going to do is give her chemo radiation therapy. It's very effective. The toxicity is not terribly great. And your mother ought to do fine. I cannot answer and will not answer the question, is it right to deprive her? But I think I've said how I feel about it. And that is that if all of her family members live into their 90s and mom's in good health at 65, that if they had fought with the insurance, if somebody, prior PCP doctor or somebody else, had fought with the insurance company or, Medic I guess, Medicare, isn't it, after 65, they'd have been able to get it, that colonoscopy done, perhaps, she doesn't have colon cancer, and hopefully they would have been able to get a pap smear. And a little bit later on, we're going to show what the difference in survival is when you catch a cancer by early detection and screening or when you wait till the symptoms get you to it. All right, so let's go to our pyramids here. On the left-hand side of these two pyramids, BKP, is the estimated new cases in the particular year of cancers. The other side is the estimated death rates. But genital system is the biggest. Wait a minute. What do you mean? Well, there's so many prostate cancers that that... Yes. There's so many prostate cancers, and those guys aren't going to die of it, right? So you, when you get to breast and you get to lung, they're up here in terms of total numbers that are really below the prostate. But if you go to the second one, it's digestive. So that's colon. That's, that's really kind of high, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, we got it. We got a. We had a picture. I, did, I, I didn't put up there. That uh, long story, but in women, breast cancer is the big, the big colon, next lung. They they they're all mixed in there together, so that colon cancer has the highest death rates in the country now. Remember back when we first started this, it was lung because lung, but lung cancer's fallen off, incidence of lung cancer's fallen off, and the survival is getting better because yeah, there's know, so much less smoking. Well, there's less smoking, but let me just say this, okay? And and uh, I'll use 20 years you ago. You can pull that thing down. I'll use 20 years ago. 20 years ago, if somebody come home from the doctor and they were diagnosed that they had lung cancer, you 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 talked it was over morphine and ice cream or it was over you had yeah. lung cancer now uh with 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 actual um um experience i have with a very personal close friend he's he he died last year but you know there's so much now that's being done with lung cancer actually medications that can isolate the cancer 
Yeah. Put it in areas. Well, remember keep now it that, there. that remember kind of kicked off that Jimmy Carter drug came right. through to immunotherapy. Right. That's not chemo. Your hair doesn't fall out. Yeah, you're right. So even with cancers that were advanced 20 years ago, and you said morphine and ice cream, because there wasn't right. anything to do except radiation or, or bad chemo that made you sick. Now you've got these drugs that aren't chemo and, and so forth. Anyway, so but, but not making not making light in no way of lung cancer, but now. The digestive system. Colon cancer. It's taken, yeah, the yeah. colon cancer. That is that is over Co and above now. Inter that's right. So, well, and I know I'm interrupting, but, but, you're the not last, but the last year, what's upsetting to me, it's really upsetting is to hear this, and I know it because we talk about it, to hear this and then hear someone like Dr. Tidman tell a patient, I want you to go for a colonoscopy, and they got to call around and call around. They call back and they say, "Dr. Timman, I can't get in for 90 days. I can't get in for this long." Well, but, but wait a minute. I, I remember, we talked about this when we talked All about right, colon cancer. No, no, no. But, but we talked about colon cancer here you a, few, what I'm a few weeks ago, right? But what happened was that we we had that guy who had his colon cancer scheduled in uh, uh, doctor in December of 2019. Right. Scheduled him for a colon for a colonoscopy that was in the spring of 2020 that's when they sh shut the hospital down and they wouldn't do anything remember they shut right. down colon colonoscopies and so the guy kind of pulled back he was kind of afraid and then in the fall of last year when they started opening things up again he went back to his primary care doc who then tried to reschedule him for the colonoscopy that got canceled again when he got ready to go to the hospital he had to have a negative test he went down there and he had a positive covid test but he wasn't sick so they canceled him he didn't get his colonoscopy until this summer then which was 18 months later and right. he had an advanced colon cancer so that's there's some people that just haven't gotten col the colonoscopy because they ain't gone but there are right. people who've tried to get the colonoscopy and they couldn't get it because of all of this stuff that's going on. Well, look, I'm going to just say, I'm going to say it like this. I mean, um, it's it's something that people don't like to talk about and they get uncomfortable talking about it. But it's not that bad. No, I just had one. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, right. and and let me tell you something. It's the drugs help. huh? The drugs help. The drugs help. We've heard, we hear off here, but it's not that's that a, that's bad. That's a green room over there. Yeah, it's not that bad, but I will tell you this. What? Let me tell you what's better is when you're done and they come in and sit down and say, don't need to see you for five ten, years. Or ten. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah. Don't need, I mean, it's only, you know, as old as you are if your family history is negative and you don't have any polyps. It's ten years as old as you but are. But no, seriously, that, that's that's what you... Right. And that's... We'll, we were talking about the. I didn't mean to get sidetracked. No, no, no. But we're talking about the miracle drug for cancer. Right, lung K, cancer. With that K Truda, the miracle drug for the colonoscopy. I call it the Michael Jackson drug. So when people are complaining about, sir, a train wreck. They say, oh, I said, look, they're gonna give you the Michael Jackson drug, and everybody knows about the Michael Jackson drug, and you don't know nothing. You go in there and they say, look, uh, doctor's coming in, and next thing you know, you're out there, and the, the lady brings you a bagel and some ice cream, I mean, bagel and some fruit juice, and the doctor comes in and said it went just fine, all right? I mean, total nothing in the front time. So you they, get um, How did we get off on Michael Jackson? Well, I want, uh, you, you went with the Michael Jackson drug. I had another, I had, no, I did not go to Thriller. Uh, but I do want to say this, you will, for as uncomfortable as it is to talk about, don't put it off. It's not that big a deal. And when a doctor comes in and sits down and says, you know, he says to he or she say, there you go, that was better. Five to ten years, come back and see me. But, but you also want to hear. Look, there's some things that I've sent off. Oh yeah, right. right. But you're here in time. Yeah, right. And right? Then, yeah, they'll call you a week later and say, okay, they're nothing. I'll see you in but, five years. But, but you, you got here. Right, the right time. And that's listening to your doctor. Men, 50 years old, doctor says go, go. Women too. I know I'm getting some, Women too. Yeah, 50 but years old. Ray would talk about men's health and okay, men that Okay, right. But if you had a colon, if you have a family history, it's 45. All right, let's go on. Sorry, so drop that sorry next about one. that. Okay, well, here, here's the whole thing here. It's not, this cancer death rates have declined for everybody. 
women, right. mid, children, adolescents, young adults, all the cancer death rates are going down because we have better treatment. Now, the cancer incidence rates, as I just showed you, is going up because we have better screening. Okay, so now let's put up, this is that one there, it's got the two, all right. So if you look at the men's cancer, the biggest chunk is prostate, yes. right? So if you look at the women's cancer here, the biggest chunk is the breast. Right. All right, so after you got that, you got, uh, what, that colon and rectum is 8.5% of men, 8.5% of women. So when you start adding those together and then you get to the fact that this prostate cancer doesn't kill very many people, lung is 13 in women and lung is 12 in men. Did you hear that? Yes. Lung is 13% in women and lung is 12 in men. You can pull that down now. There's something to be said there, isn't there? Because... Back 20 years ago, lung cancer was a male disease. It was the World War II Korean vet smoking cigarettes that he got free in his little pack of uh, MREs and uh, K, K rations, they called them then. And then in the 50s and 60s, women became emancipated and they had the anti-war movement and the, the no brassiers and the free love and the what do you call it? What's the name of that rock and roll concert? Woodstock and all that. And and so women began to smoke. Oh, okay. I was wondering when we were going to get to the lung cancer. Women, I, won, I wonder when Woodstock was you know, going to get uh, And the band The Bra was going to get all that. But the whole liberation movement for women, they smoked. Okay. All so right. then lung cancer began to pick up for women. And they and they they didn't catch men until the last well, what three or four years, and now women and men are about the same. There's not much difference between 12 and 13 percent. All right, so let's go to the next one. This big old long thing here, I won't bore you, but if you looked at this over time, this is the this is the number of cases per 100,000 population. This is a big old long chart, but this big old spike in prostate cancer corresponds with invention of the PSA test. Yes, yes. Clearly, all right. So now you look down here with colon, lung, breast, they're kind of just sliding along. But the breast cancer detection rate starts going up with the time of the PSA. What, what, was, what was that all about? It was better mammography that was given to more people because they put it in vans and the churches took it out to the community. You can pull that down now. And the detection rate went up. Because if you go back to the 1970s, really only the privileged women would get a mammography. And then they, the, uh, St. Joseph's Hospital and Northside. Well, that, is, that has changed over the years because I go in, uh, I had to go in to... Uh, to a doctor's office, uh, a medical center the other day, and 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 I see billboards and things like that that they now are, are offering an um, th 3D or or or, or a, a mammography that is just really now high tech. Yeah. That they're, which one is that? The new one? That yeah. They, that, that, there, there are several different ones, but 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 you just if you look around, the hospital up here in Blairsville. The hospital over in uh, Murphy, North Carolina. This is, I was going to wear, I wore my pink shirt last week, didn't I? I wore my breast cancer pink shirt last week. In this month, these different hospitals will have a, a, a screening mammography for people with no insurance for maybe $50 so that you can take advantage of it and people that don't have the $50 frequently they'll take a mam what do you call it? A, a mobile mammography unit in an 18 wheeler and they'll go to a housing project let's say and up here in the mountains that's not appropriate because we don't have housing projects but in in the big cities they'll go to a housing project or somewhere where the minority people that don't get good medical care can have a mammogram that's that's the point so so in that chart we just pulled that down that, that's how the breast cancer gets diagnosed. Now, the lung cancer diagnosis is stayed relatively flat, but the old lung cancers were being diagnosed, as you said earlier, you, it was lights out, 
because they had to get symptoms and start coughing up blood or have pain. And now we have that screening lung CT that even Medicare pays for, that if you have smoked up to 40 package years, which means a pack a day for 40 years or two packs a day for 20 years, you can get that CT scan. So we're diagnosing lung cancer earlier and we have better treatments. So you get more lung cancers and you get fewer people dying from it. All right, pull up this next one. This is just the, just the issue regarding the incidence that there are sitting right here are four adults. Let's just, let's, let's, leave, let's leave the young man out. Here are three adults with gray hair. The incidence of cancer here is that at least one of us is going to have cancer. Well, I've had melanoma and prostate cancer, and huh? yeah, right, yeah, you got a colonoscopy. But the point is, that's a, now this is women. One out of every eight women in the United States is going to have breast cancer. Now that's one out of eight. And so I said one out of three of us is going to have cancer. One man out of a thousand is going to have breast cancer, but that's a high number. So bring that one down. Let's go to the next one. One in six men are going to have prostate cancer. So now we got one more gray hair in here. So that is four of us in here. So we're still we still have cancer incidence pretty much in this group of four gray-headed people. It about hits the about hits the the. Um, the expected incidence. Okay, you can pull that one down. You remember in that in that that pyramid we had that yes. how many of those cancers were skin? Mm -hmm. Well, I've had a melanoma. That skin cancer in that thing is not the squamous cell cancer or the easy cancer. So there's a ton of skin cancers too, but people aren't going to die. All right, let's go to this next one because this is why I made this statement about taking that. Um, mammogram machine into underserved areas. Now look at this real carefully here. The incidence, this is just cancer incidence in let's say all races, it's 104 cases and 19 deaths. So that means one out of five patients with cancer in all races are going to die. But when you get to non-Hispanic blacks, look at that number. 171 and roughly 40 percent. When you get to um, totally Caucasian, the number is down to um, for, uh, 40 and 18. So you can pull that down now. So you have got among the African American the Hispanic, an increased incidence and an increased death rate that is not related totally to detection. And you remember all those, um, who's that famous black actor that does the prostate cancer ads um, that brought the attention to, he's always on the TV, it's, but it is a much bigger problem, breast cancer and colorectal cancer in African Americans than it is in European Caucasians. So that idea that you've got to go out and work to find these, these uh, malignancies in the underserved population is an obligation on the healthcare system, and Northside does it, and uh, uh, what's that thing over there? Erlanger does it over there at uh, Union General and other, over there, they, they, they make an effort to find the underserved community. So here's the one, here's that one we want to look at about the screening and the not screening. So with screening, this is just, this is just illustrative. With screening, you would make the average cancer diagnosis at age 60. That's average cancer. And the, the five-year survival rate is essentially 100%. Meaning that if you wait until your lung cancer causes you to cough or your colon cancer causes you to obstruct or bleed or whatever it is, that's 
without screening, you're diagnosed at seven years later. So that's not that's, that's, that's hard to figure out, is it? If, if you can diagnose colon cancer with a colonoscopy, but you have, if you're going to wait for it to grow enough to cause pain or bleeding, that delay is seven years. That's the delay in breast cancer between the time you could find it on a mammogram when it's as big as a, as a you know, a grain of sand and get big enough to detect. That's another, that's eight years. So once you've done that, then the five-year survival rate untreated goes way down. Okay, you can pull that down. So that is the reason that that woman, well, that's how it goes back to this poor woman with the cervix cancer. She should have been allowed or somebody should have fought for her to get that, um, that pap, pap, pap smear. smear. Yeah, okay. Pap. The last thing we're going to show is this. And it, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that this, that if you did, this is survival rate with stages, that if you wait until your colorectal cancer has a lymph node or your prostate cancer is big enough to cause obstruction or your breast cancer is big enough to feel rather than catch by mammography, all those advanced stages, that your 10-year survival goes way the heck down. You can pull that down. So... To, to sum up this 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 one case that's got two different issues in it, the the patient with the cervix cancer, we understand why it blocked the kidney, why she's in this trouble, and if she had had a Pap smear, she probably would have diagnosed this seven to ten years earlier. And yes, mom is getting good treatment. And then secondly. Dr. Tidman's not here, but this drives home his go get your mammogram, go get your PSA, go get your colonoscopy because we are underutilizing the diagnostic procedures that we have to make early detection. And the second part of his question was, we know that death rates are falling. Death rates are falling because we have better treatments, as you were talking about with the lung and the, the Jimmy Carter drug and so right. forth. So I think that was a great question he asked. I can see the desperation in it. And when he says he's confused, I, I think he had a good right to be confused. And I'll, I'll stop with that. Well, folks, I know we spent a lot of time on that question, but there was a lot of things uh, when you say it was two parts. There was a lot of things in there that I think I wanted to touch on as far as, as discuss uh, that I think are were important and I'm glad we got a chance to talk about it and I'm always thankful for uh, Georgia Cancer Specialists affiliated with Northside Cancer Center for our segment and it's now time for the news of the day. All right. I want you to read that one right there. Antidepressants may cut COVID-19 related hospitalizations and mortality. <laughs> now, is that stupid or what? Whoa, whoa wait a minute. Made a, made a mess here. Okay. That's okay. We're, That's all right. We got a carpet here. That's no big. And that, and that drives real quick. We'll all right, figure well, it out. There is so much BS that comes out every day about COVID. I just thought I would seize on this one because we everybody takes antidepressants. I mean, we got between the four of us, we got four wives, and I guarantee you, two of those wives at least take an antidepressants. <laughs> I but you know, but anyhow, that's this. This so makes, you're off your meds this week. <laughs> so this makes it sound like you that's need, that's the problem. I'm okay, sorry, man. I know. But this makes it sound like. You, you sound like everybody who's depressed and takes antidepressants has got a lesser chance of dying of COVID. I mean, that's the way that would, you'd think, right? Yes. This is a drug that's almost, I, I don't know anybody that has taken this drug. This is a specific drug for societal anxiety disorder and obsessive compulsive disorder that is old a real old drug such that the brand isn't even marketed in europe or the united states anymore and it's a generic drug that i know some academic psychiatrist somewhere probably still writes a prescription for but we've got tons of new ones that aren't being used so that that to me is is a bait and switch thing there if you if if you know what i mean right now look what the next one says the top one yeah the top one to me is 
immunocompromised. Oh, well, just may need. Just forget may, that. Part. May need fourth COVID shot. Now you just got through fighting the battle of the third shot, and and yesterday they're talking about a fourth shot. Now, what are you gonna? I, I, I'm not even convinced of the third shot, as you know. We've gone through that before, and I know Ray isn't. But anyway, I thought both of those were news that I, that was. I think if we got covering. into, I'm not convinced. If that was, if that was the opening, and I'm not convinced on the third shot, we don't have time to cover that. I am going to say this, and and uh, you know, this is my personal opinion. So that way, it's not the opinion of anybody or the sponsor itself. I, 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 am, I am trying to figure out what the emergency is because, <laughs> yeah, you because did that last well, week, no, no, this past week, for the kids. FDA, and, yeah. and, and, and what I don't like is the media, and this is what I always get to, okay? I'm not against the FDA and the CDC. I've got my opinions there, but they'll say instead of they've went from instead of saying emergency Authorized uh, emergency use authorization. Uh, yeah, use authorization. They're now just saying the FDA is approving the EUA. So most people don't, you know, the EUA. Why are you saying it EUA? Why aren't you saying aren't emergency you? use authorization? Yeah. Why are you saying yeah. FDA is going to approve the EUA this week for kids? I'm a, I, I don't. There's something about it I don't like. Well, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with you. There Good. you go. All right, I got two more things. Now. Let's go. What's we, how many deaths in Fannin County last week? 106. How many last week? Uh, I think 104 last week. That's right. So, what did two. I? Yeah, but the week before that, there'd been five. So right. there was two this week. Right. So I told you that the that and, and remember last week we were at four percent on the test. We're tests. at six point five. Last week we were four. Right. We're at six point eight this week. Right. So the test, the, the positive test rate went back above five. Right. But I'm not going to think there's much difference between six point eight and four point five. So right. I, so the death rate, as I predicted two weeks ago, is falling. Right. And it was it was a big news item today that um, Ohio had more deaths last year than births for the first time in recorded history. And they're not the first state to do that. There was another state. To yes, do that. Right. right. Now, and they're attributing that to the excess deaths from COVID. They might be, but we've been at we've been at a spot where this country has had a a very thin margin of population stability in what I consider to be long term American socioeconomic uh, groups that the growth rate in this country has been from immigration right right and been from societal groups with a high birth rate which generally are not the population of the state of Ohio might be the population of Texas or might be the population of Chicago, but not basically the state of Ohio. So that is a socioeconomic, uh, there's a lesson in there that we won't go into, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yes, I do. And folks, we thank you very much. Georgia Cancer Specialist affiliated with Northside Cancer Center for the segment. Um, I am seeing all the uh, trick-or-treat candy come in, so I think I'll go on break. Uh, we got, is it trick-or-treat? Trick-or-treat. Trick-or-treat here. Hey, is tonight's safe zone or is that tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow. Okay. Safe zone, tomorrow night, right, in Blue Ridge. I think so, yeah. Many of you have safe zone. Thank you, Dr. Whaley. We always know we got to get you out of here because you, you might be late for work. I might be late for work. Go out and vote if you live in Blue Ridge and vote for Dr. Whaley. Next. I'm not supposed to say that, but I just That's did. That's okay. Say it. Say it. Just say it. Next Tuesday, right? All right. Next Tuesday. Get out and vote everywhere. Dr. Whaley, you have a nice day. All-star political panel right after this.